Across the Ocean, Chapter 2, from Book 2. I'm going to start reading now. On the docks of the Rimmer Thames, near London, a group of Englishmen readed themselves for a trip across the vast ocean. They were brave men, as they have as they had to be to embark on an adventure such as they had in mind. They were going to a new world where the where there were strange animals, deep forests, and people said to be wild. There was also good, they were sure of that, in a, a play popular in London to all of Virginia. I said, I tell thee gold is more plentiful than copper is with us. Why, man, all oh, their dripping pans and chamber pots are pure gold. And as for the rubies and diamonds, they go forth on the holy days and gather them by the seashore to hang on the children's coats and stick in their caps. Of course, of course the authors of that play have never been to Virginia, but people believed them. Everyone knew there were gold in America. Haven't the Spaniards found a mountain of gold? And wasn't England now one of, now the greatest of nations? Her time has come! Of the 105 men who stood on the docks, more than half listed themselves as gentlemen. In England, gentlemen were not expect, not expected you know, or trained for work. They lived on family money. They had time for adventure. They hoped to find riches. Most bought their best clothes for the ship. They puffed knee pants, their silk stockings, their feathered hats, their gaudy blousers, those... Those in plainer coats were the gentlemen's servants. Few were carpenters and bricklayers. Four of them were boys, probably orphans or runaways. These, those boys were called lockers, and were expected to climb on the rigging high of the ship's mast. Help sail the seas, set the seas, set the sails, and keep a lookout for land in danger. If the younger fell in the ocean was lost, well, too bad. That was one of the perils of sea travel. Ocean travel was risky, they all knew that. They also knew that the capital, Christopher Newport, was one of England's finest sailors. As a privateer, he has sailed the New World Seas. Queen Elizabeth has encouraged English captains to prey on Spanish ships. The Newport has led an expedition that destroyed or captured 20 Spanish vessels and sacked four towns in the West Indies and Florida. He was an English hero, but the Spaniards thought of him was something else, maybe a pirate. But the men and the boys who who climbed onto the three small ships and set sail down to the Rainbow Thames felt confident with Newport in command. What surprised them all were continental winds. They sailed into the Atlantic, and the winds blew them back, them back to England. Off the out they went again and back. For six years, those strange winds blew. Six weeks, while the voyagers ate their breakfast food and got nowhere. Now there were grumbl- Now there were grumblings. Some wishes they never came. Do you think they were scared? Do you think they thought of turning back? Pretend you're younger. Are you excited or afraid or both? They had boarded ship on December 1606, but it was February 1607 when finally they lost sight of England. Captain Newport soon had took them into the Canary Islands, where the three ships took on fresh water and food. There, then they were off to the islands of the West Indies, where they rested and prepared themselves. For they understood when they left the West Indian island of Marantique, they were heading to a little-known territory. They were doing something in the land is not before. They are going to start a colony on the mainland. Spain has grown rich because of her colonies. England would beat Spain at that game. These Englishmen were determined to catch enrich England and themselves too. For a few of the voyagers, there might have been something else besides gold. How you continue though? For a few of the voyagers, there might have been something else besides gold that drew them to America. That was a beauty and abundance. Those who have seen the land built of birds and flowers and fish more gorgeous than one could imagine. A port called Virginia. Oh, it's only paradise. England seemed crowded. Timber was scarce and getting scarier. Farmland was disappearing. London streets were filled with beggars. Might America's land and tree and soil be as valuable as the gold nuggets the adventurers thought they could 
they were sure to find him. Could this new world be a land of op hope and opportunity? There were some in the Europe who thought so.